now that we've got a pretty good handle on what bureaucracy is, how it developed in the United States, and how the various bureaucratic organizations of the federal government are structured, let's look at the important question of what the federal bureaucracy does. The main task of the executive branch bureaucracies is policy implementation. This task is filled with political peril, as the president, Congress, and the judiciary all try to influence the actions of the bureaucracy. But it's also a critically important task for determining exactly how government ends up serving the American people. Broadly speaking, bureaucrat what bureaucratic agencies do is they implement policy. This involves translating the goals or objectives of a policy into an operating, ongoing program. At its most basic level, it's about putting legislation into effect. This includes things like translating leg legislative language passed by Congress into rules, regulations, and forms. Congress will often, often pass a law specifying some goal it wants accomplished, and will generally specify what department will carry it out, as well as some rules and processes the department must follow. But Congress generally leaves a lot of details to be filled in by bureaucracy. Oftentimes, executive branch agencies are left to figure out what resources are needed in order to achieve objectives established in laws passed by Congress. So, for example, Congress has passed a number of laws dealing with the financing of college education, but it has given the Department of Education a lot of discretion to develop the details of the actual programs that citizens interact with, from the FAFSA form determining financial aid eligibility to the servicing of student loans that are paid back long after a student has graduated from college. Even though, as we learned, Congress changes laws infrequently because the leg legislative process is so difficult, bureaucracies continuously update their implementation procedures to make policy more responsive to the American people. As an example, the link provided on this slide connects to a Department of Education announcement of revisions to student loan servicing procedures to improve the experience of student loan borrowers. By writing laws that leave important details to be filled in by the bureaucracy, Congress gives a lot of power to the bureaucracy to shape the way laws are implemented. This power is called administrative discretion. Figures in the executive branch, from the president and cabinet secretaries at the top, all the way down to street level bureaucrats, the federal workers who interact with the public on a day to day basis to deliver federal programs, have significant flexibility in how laws are implemented. For example, over the years, Congress has passed many environmental laws intended to deal with pollution. Pollution control is a highly scientifically complex field. There are a lot of chemical compounds out there, and we have a limited scientific understanding of the effects of many of these compounds on human health. Most members of Congress are not scientists, so they've passed laws giving power to technical experts in the Environmental Protection Agency to set standards based on their judgments about the scientific evidence. But because there's uncertainty and judgment involved, the decisions of bureaucracies like the Environmental Protection Agency can be influenced by the preferences of the president and his political appointees. So, for instance, as the link provided in this slide shows, the Trump administration has aggressively rolled back environmental rules put into place by the Obama and Clinton administrations. This has represented a significant shift in environmental policy in this country, from a greater emphasis on environmental protection to a greater emphasis on fossil fuel development and business deregulation. And this change has occurred even though the laws on the books passed by Congress have not changed during this time. That's the power of implementation and how presidents can use their standing at the head of the executive branch to exercise certain unilateral powers. Because bureaucracies have significant discretion and how they carry out the laws of the United States, bureaucratic implementation creates a number of political tensions. The first tension has to do with how much control bureaucracy should have in managing a free market system. Bureaucracies are filled with technical experts who use their expertise to devise standards and regulations to try to protect Americans as citizens and as consumers. But bureaucrats are also expected not to get in the way of a thriving private sector and risk damaging economic growth. This places bureaucracy at the center of a highly partisan conflict, as the balance between government protection versus freedom for private enterprise 
is something that strongly divides Democrats and Republicans, with most Democrats arguing for stronger governmental protections of citizens, and most Republicans arguing for greater freedoms for private sector enterprises. Because government bureaucracies hire specialists on the basis of merit, bureaucracies where most of the technical expertise in government resides, not in Congress or in the White House. Bureaucrats often have very strong ideas, not just about how to implement policy, but also what the policy should be in the first place. But the idea in a democracy is that goals are supposed to be set by elected leaders. The trouble is that elected leaders often don't know what they're doing. The way that previous tension gets resolved is by having various actors in the political system trying to exert control over the bureaucracy. The president has a number of tools at his disposal to exercise some control over the bureaucracy. As we've discussed, the president can influence the priorities and policies of executive branch departments by appointing secretaries and other high-level managers who agree with the president's agenda. The president can also issue executive orders specifically instructing the executive branch to make certain changes in the way that it implements policy. And the president can express support for or opposition to the programs a bureaucracy carries out by proposing budget increases or budget cuts for the bureaucracy. Likewise, Congress has the ultimate say in passing budgets for executive branch agencies, directly uh, directing them specifically on how they're supposed to spend their funds. Congress can hold oversight hearings if they are unhappy with the way in which an agency is implementing policy, which provides a strong incentive for the agency to get back in line with Congress's wishes. And perhaps most importantly of all, if bureaucracies are using discretion in ways that Congress doesn't like, Congress can always pass new legislation with more specific legislative language, instructing bureaucracy precisely how they should implement the law, thus removing administrative discretion. Finally, if a bureaucratic agency implements a law in a way that runs afoul of the Constitution, the judiciary can overturn agency rules and regulations. Frankly, implementation is a bit of a confusing mess to determine who's actually in charge, but that is consistent with the principles of checks and balances established by the framers.